I'm just going to say this up front. Cherry Audio needs to slow their roll. They've been making emulations of analog synth after analog synth, even making their own along the way. And they all sound really fucking good, but they need to stop because I'm running out of money and also hard drive space on my computer. But mostly the money thing. Nick from Gorley Records here. My stoke level is high because Cherry Audio just came out with a new synth in support of what they proclaim to be Bob Moog Appreciation Month, which means we have a new emulation on the marketplace of the classic Mini Moog Model D in the form of Cherry Audio's new Mini Mode. Hmm, see what you did there. And to see if it's any good, we're gonna test it with an original 1970s Moog Model D. Just kidding, I can't afford that. <sighs> which is why I'm glad Cherry Audio made an emulation of it. But guess what? It does sound dope. So if you aren't already familiar with the history of this synth, just know that it came out in the 70s by a company called Moog, which is probably the most iconic synth company of all time. And it was one of the first portable synths ever created, which was a huge deal back when synthesizers took up like entire rooms. And because it's one of the original portable synths, it's really simple to use because they couldn't really pack a lot of features into it. And it's also just super fun and amazing and has a lot of cool history. The original is monophonic, but it does have three oscillators, which gives it some like really fat sound. And since this emulation is in the digital space, we can now really easily make it polyphonic. Now this is not the first time somebody has tried to recreate the Mini Moog. We've seen hardware and software emulations of this already, such as IK's Mini Mod, the Moog iOS app itself, Steinberg's horrible Model E catastrophe as seen here, and probably most notably Arturia's Mini V. However, there is one aspect of Cherry Audio's rendition that I have mad respect for, and that's the fact that they tried to keep this as a one-to-one -one original creation to the original as possible, and didn't try to re-engineer any of the functionality with their own goals in mind. Probably because they aren't egotistical maniacs who are trying to improve on what has already become one of the most legendary synths of all time. The only notable additions that Cherry Audio has made is the ability for polyphony, because why not? And where the on and off switch used to be is now a limiter switch. Aside from that, everything is intended to function just like the original with no added bells and whistles. But one of the reasons I really like Cherry Audio's emulations is they do an excellent job of honing in that analog sound. Now, I'm not a programmer, nor do I know what it takes to accurately emulate the sporadic nature that is analog circuitry, but whatever voodoo Cherry Audio is involved with in making these analog emulations, they always sound really good. In lining up to the launch of Mini Mode, they even put this challenge on their website, which now this came out, I'm guessing maybe uses sounds from this, to determine if you can tell the difference between a true analog piece of hardware and the software emulations of it. Uh, it's kind of a fun challenge to take. I'll put the link for it down below. I got three out of three right, and I also guessed on three of them because I had no idea the difference and couldn't really hear any differences, and I suppose that's kind of the point of the challenge. And this is not to say that all soft synths replace hardware analog synths. Uh, there's actually a lot of really horribly done analog soft synths that like don't sound good at all, but the point is, is that Cherry Audio does a really good job at making these analog emulations sound as real as possible. And in case I haven't talked Cherry Audio up enough, something else they do really well is that their price points are always right on the money. Pun. Mini Mode costs only $40 compared to Arturia's Mini V, which is probably the most notable competitor, which costs $150. With Arturia's Mini V, you do get more features given that there is a huge under the hood effects section. But the huge downside to this is that almost their entire preset library is designed with this effects section in mind and not so much the actual creativity that you can get out of just the simplicity of the Mini Moog itself. And another downside is that creating this large effects section 
costs money and makes this thing more expensive to produce, which then in turn increases the price you have to pay to get this plugin, which to emphasize is almost quadruple what Cherry Audio is charging for mini mode. Just for fun though, let's do a sound test between the two to see how they compare. So I'm gonna do this sound test. I have the same patch on both the mini mode as well as the mini V, and I'm just gonna flip back and forth between the two so you can hear the difference and I'll change notes. And then we'll also switch to poly and you can hear the difference in poly mode. Okay, now let's test poly between the two. So that was a very simplified and dumbed down audio test, but you can kind of decide for yourself what you think sounds better. I think, in, especially in the mono mode, you could hear the Cherry Audio one had kind of a little bit more shine to it, whereas the Arturio one kind of felt held back a little bit. But regardless, I think Cherry Audio did an excellent job with this plugin and it sounds really good. And we're comparing it to a time-tested $150 plugin by a huge company and Cherry Audio is a smaller company and isn't as old as Arturia. So uh, yeah, Cherry Audio is, uh, is coming in hard. Now, something that is really fun to do with the Mini Mode, and you could also do this with the Mini Moog, was to input a signal into the synth to run it through the filter section. Now, in order to trigger the filter envelopes, you also have to have MIDI playing. You can't just play audio without any MIDI playing or else nothing will sound. Now, you could have some kind of ghost note playing in order to keep the gate open so that way the guitar signal can go straight into the synth without having to trigger open and closed, but that would be too boring. So I'm gonna do this a really overkill way. I'm not only going to feed the guitar signal into mini mode, I'm also gonna feed my guitar into an app called Doubler2, which is by Voclia, and that turns incoming audio signals into MIDI, and then I'm gonna send that MIDI data back into mini mode as well. So what that's gonna do is every time I play a note on my guitar, the audio signal will go to mini mode, and the audio signal will go to Doubler, which will send that exact note to mini mode as well, and that'll trigger my gate, and I can also use the oscillators to play in tandem with my guitar to get just this wild sound. So at the end of the day, if you're wondering if Cherry Audio's mini mode is worth it, I would say definitely yes. The original mini modes are ridiculously expensive and even hardware knockoffs will still cost you a hell of a lot more than 40 bucks and they're gonna take up very precious desk space. Now something to note about the mini mode, true to its original form, is it doesn't have a lot of modulation parameters. The only modulation destinations are the oscillator pitch and the filter cutoff frequency. And the only modulation sources are oscillator three, which can be used in a low mode to turn it into an LFO and also the noise generator and the depth of the modulation is controlled solely by the mod wheel on your keyboard. Remember that this is one of the first portable synths ever created, so just being able to take a synthesizer onto a stage and use it and travel with it was a huge feat in and of itself. If you want something that has more of that analog flavor and a lot more modulation, I would look into Cherry Audio's Dream Synth, which was their last release. It's basically this crazy hybrid of analog, wavetable, and vector synthesis all wrapped up into one package, and it has every type of modulation parameter you could possibly think of. But uh, I'll have that more on a later video. On a side note, I'm constantly working to improve the quality and entertainment value of these videos, and I really hope that that shows because it's a lot of work. So if you like this video, please, please, please be sure to press that like button so more people can see it and consider subscribing. Or don't consider it and just uh, indiscriminately press that red button. <laughs> and I will see you soon, my friends.